Hello, students. Today, we're going to delve into arrays, one of the most fundamental data structures in Java. Arrays allow you to store multiple values in a single variable, which can be incredibly useful when you need to manage large amounts of data. So let's explore the basics of arrays and how to use them. So first, what is an array? Well, an array is a collection of variables that are accessed with an index number. So all elements in an array must be of the same type. Arrays can store primitives like int, char, and primitive types like int, char, doubles, etc., uh, as well as objects like strings, scanners, etc. So when you're declaring an array, to declare an array, you need to specify the type of its elements and use the square brackets to indicate that it's an array. So if you had int, square brackets, uh, numbers, this declares an array of integers. If you had a uh, string, square brackets, names, this would declare an array of strings. So when you are uh, creating an array, after you declare an array, you need to create it using that new keyword. Um, specifying the size, well, which is the number of the elements that it can hold. Okay. So um, we declared these previously. So now do something with it. Let's create them. So we have numbers, which is equal to a new uh, so the integer array. This is size five. Uh, so this creates an array that can hold five integers. Okay, so let's look at how that works in names. Uh, names equals new string um, plus three. Okay. So this creates an array that can hold three strings. Okay. And you can combine the declarations and the creation in just one step. That's a lot easier. Uh, so we have it, square brackets, numbers equals uh, new int five. So, um, and then string, square brackets, names equals new string three. Okay. So, <clears throat> but you also can just initialize your array. So you can initialize array at any time of the decoration just using curly braces. So, save this. Now we have an int array with the variable name numbers that has the elements two, three, four, five in it. Um, and let's do something for strings. Alice. Charlie, Charlie. Okay. So now let's, uh, <clears throat> let's access the array elements. So array elements are accessed using their index, and we start starting from zero for the first element. So, for instance, if I want to get the first number, say int first number, so we get to numbers zero. Okay. So this will access or this accesses the first element of the numbers array.
So as you can see, we get what? So, let's say we want to get the first element of uh, of this. This is a string. That is first string. That was, that was essentially, or essentially the first element of the names array. You can modify elements using their index as well. So <clears throat> let's say we want to change the second element of the array numbers, or the numbers array, to 10. The second element would be an index 1, the index element 0. And let's say we wanted to change the third element of the names array to Dave. There's two. The third element. As you see before, we had two and Charlie, and now they become ten. Okay. Array length. So the length of an array, which is the number of elements that it can hold, can be accessed using the length property or attribute. Um, so, for instance, for instance, let's say we wanted to find out the length of numbers. numbers length. And that's equal to that's equal to at least uh, okay. So this will get the length of the numbers array using the length uh, attribute. It's also probably property, um, but is a attribute of the array so for array objects. So for in the class. The array class is a attribute by itself. So we have the dot method that we use. That's what we're we using a dot in front of it. Okay. And let's do the same thing for names, link. And this, of course, would be names dot length. Ooh. Five and three, and still have five and three. Yay! Uh, so let's take a look at an example program. So, kind of bringing it all in together, shall we? So, um, in this program, instead of um, initializing the array, Let's declare and create the array, and then let's initialize the array element. 
it did will access it by putting some of the elements. And we'll access and put some elements so you can see it here. And then we'll see an example of just declaring and initializing the strings. Um, and similarly, we'll look at it. Uh, look at this accessing, and we'll print out the elements of it, and then we'll uh, put the length of the arrays. Just so you can see. Okay. So similarly, what we already did here. Let's pull for that. So first, we're going to declare and create the array of integers. So we have int square brackets numbers, and it's going to equal to new. We got the keyword int, um, and then square brackets put number five, meaning we're creating an integer array that's going to be saved in the variable numbers. Um, it's going to have five elements there, or it can hold up to five elements, uh, or it can hold five up, hold five elements. We're going to initialize the array elements. And remember that the indexes of arrays start at the number zero. So our at numbers zero, I'll put one, numbers one we'll put two, numbers two we'll put three, numbers three we'll put four, numbers four we'll put five. This is the same as if we were to combine these together and just um, initialize the array at this declaration. Okay. As we saw before. Okay. Then we're going to access and print out the array elements. So we're going to put the first element, so that means we're going to index zero of numbers. We're going to get the second element, which we're going to index one. The elements, the index number will always be one less than the element number. Okay? Because we always begin at zero. And the reason we all just kind of zero. All right, so next, we're going to uh, declare and initialize an array of strings, as we saw before. So strings, square brackets, names. And square brackets will have our three, um, our three people, so Alice, Bob, and Charlie. We're going to access and print array elements. So the first name is going to be index zero, as we saw before, and the second name will be at index one. Then let's print out the length of these arrays. We know that the length of our first array can hold up to five, and we have already put in five elements, so it's five. And the strings name and the names element. Uh, sorry, the names we had three elements in it, so we should see a length of three. So yes, let's do this and. Sure. Yes, yeah, so first element is one and two. And our first name is Alice and Bob, and we have five and three, as we expected. Okay. So the summary. Arrays are powerful. Are a powerful way to multiple to store multiple values of the same type in a single variable. Um, you can declare, you can create, and initialize arrays to hold your data and then access or modify the elements using their index. The understanding of arrays is fundamental to managing data effectively in Java. So, bon appetit.